Hello and welcome to Spring into Storytime. Today I'm here for Fingal Libraries and I'm going to do a creative writing workshop for you. Now this is a creative writing workshop about magical creatures. Um, I'm a storyteller, I'm also a writer and I write fantasy stories for children. So my stories are full of magical creatures and anything with magic really. So today I'd like to um, tell you how to do it, how to create uh, a magical creature. And for that, I want to read to you a little scene of one of my books. Um, the book itself isn't published yet, but it is being sent to publishers as we speak. So I can't tell you much about the book itself um, because nothing is set in stone about this yet, not even the title. But for now, we call it Deepwood City, and um, it's about a girl who has fire magic. So she can call fire to her hands and she hates it. She hates her magic. She hates the fire. She can't control it. And she lives in a place called Deepwood City, which is a huge, big city surrounded by deep, dark, vast and scary forests. And those forests are so scary because they are full of magical creatures, dark magical creatures who come and attack the city. And now this girl, she's called Nipper, she is an apprentice to what they call seekers. And these seekers are people with magical abilities who are sent out into the forest to hunt and to capture those dark creatures. And Nipper, because she has magic, she has to go as well. So she spends a lot of time in those forests. But the scene that I will read to you is actually not in the forest. It is in the city, in the heart of the city, where a creature managed to get in. Now, the scene that I'm going to read to you is actually a deleted scene. So for one reason or another, it didn't make it into the book. But I still love the creature that um, I'm describing in it. And it will give you a few hints of how to create your own creature and also how to describe it. Now, um, Nippa in this scene is with her teacher, who is a seeker, and he's called Vess. The Weather Giant Vess walked ahead of me, his stride seeming to get longer with each step. I could barely keep up with him. Slow down, I called. Why do we have to run like this? My teacher stopped and turned around. We had reached the edge of the marketplace. There were only a few people on it today and no stalls at all. I told you, he said, I have work to do and his words were cut off when a ripple went through the marketplace. It lifted the cobblestones like a wave going through a lake. Bess and I were thrown to the ground. My teacher was back on his feet in an instant. He pulled me up and into a house entrance. What is going on? I ask. But my teacher just shook his head, his eyes resting on the marketplace. Cracks appeared in the houses around us as the marketplace shook. And then an enormous head emerged from the cobblestones. It broke through them. My mouth fell open. Vess cursed. A weather giant, just what we need. Cobblestones rained down all around us and screams filled the air as people rushed off the marketplace and the creature emerged further. It rose up, revealing bare shoulders and a broad chest before it came to a standstill half in, half under the marketplace. It looked like a gigantic man, bold, with blue skin. Wide, thin lines zigzagged across his face and shoulders, like lightning carved into his skin. His eyes were closed, and now that he didn't rise any longer, he was completely still. 
Vess pulled his oak bird out of his pocket, whispered to it and flung it into the air. I knew he was calling the other seekers to help. I would have gladly waited until all the seekers were here with their magic and weapons to take care of the giant. But my teacher made his way carefully over the destroyed marketplace. He stopped in front of the giant and after a brief hesitation, I joined him. Up close, the skin of the giant looked like thick leather. His eyes were still closed, his breathing even, causing gusts of wind to beat down on us with every breath he took. Is he... Is he asleep? I whispered. Dormant. Vess walked around the giant. He just transformed. Someone must have had him working in the salt mines. But they didn't know that exposure to salt will turn the normally small creature into this. If we're lucky, he won't wake up for a while. I edged away from the creature. What happens if he wakes up? All hell will break loose, Nipper. He's a weather giant, a storm giant to be precise. If he wakes up, he can destroy the whole city. I frowned. With a storm? I mean, I know storms are bad, but surely... This is nothing like any storm you've ever seen, Wes interrupted me. This creature can unleash the forces of nature, Nipper. No stone will be left on the other when he's finished. I looked up into the massive giant's face that was looming over us. His eyelashes were as long as my arms, and they seemed to flutter. What, um, what would wake him up? I glanced around at the people running away from the marketplace, at the doors and shutters banging shut at every house. It was not exactly quiet here. Magic, Vess said. As soon as he senses magic being used around him, he'll wake up. I froze, my magic prickling underneath my skin. Why didn't you say that? I stumbled back from the giant. My magic always came out when it was supposed to stay hidden. My fire burned underneath my skin, pushed to come out. I turned, ready to run. I knew the more I was afraid, the more my magic would try to get out. I need to get away from here, I thought desperately. But it was too late. Flames burst from the palms of my hands. Vess whirled around to me. What are you doing? Get rid of those flames, Snipper, now! I tried, but they kept coming. They lapped up between my fingers, licked the air hungrily. In front of me, the giant woke up. He roared. His eyes flew open. The white lines on his skin started to glow. His eyes were big white orbs, no pupil at all, and they rested only on me. And then all hell broke loose. So that was uh, a scene from my book and a creature that I described. And for now, I'd like to give you um, four tips of how you can create um, your own creature and maybe four things to keep in mind when you come up with an idea of what your magical creature in your story could be like. So let's look at um, the first question, which is, what is your magical creature? And that really is the most important question. Here you come up with an idea of what your magical creature looks like, what their special powers are. And um, to get inspiration for that, uh, you can always look at um, mythical characters and mythical creatures that are out there in stories already. So uh, maybe can I have a dragon? What is that? That is not a dragon. That's a snake. Uh, I'm working here with uh, Doodly. Uh, it's a software. And sometimes their images are a little bit limited. But 
Oh, okay. A snake breathing fire. Yeah. Well, that could be a dragon. Maybe. <laughs> so if you look at it, um, many mythical creatures that are in stories, they resemble animals that actually exist or humans that do exist. So um, that was done to give the reader an idea of um, how they can imagine those because you cannot, well, you can actually imagine the unimaginable, but you can give your reader a little bit of help um, by making your creature resembling something that they know. So with dragons, it's a snake that's breathing fire and has wings. And you can choose any other creature uh, to, to form your own magical creature. Many magical creatures are actually two creatures merged together. There's the famous Minotaur, um, who's half man, half bull. There's mermaids, of course, half fish, half human. And uh, maybe we can get something like that as well. Ah, okay, an eagle and a doggy. So we have a flying dog. Now that's not bad. Very nice. And can we get something else? Another eagle, okay. And a shark. Oh, I love it. Now that's a bit scary as well. But it doesn't only have to be animals. So you can actually use anything um, to make a creature out of it. Fire, water, wind, earth, all the elements. And you can make a creature out of it. Like here, we have a very scary wave chasing another wave. So ask yourself, your creature, what does it look like? Is it big? Is it small? Is it fluffy? Is it scaly? Um, what do they smell like? What are their powers? So if you have a clear image of that, you can start creating your creature. So the next question is, what are they actually like? What's their character? So your magical being, is it um, very laid back and relaxed? Like, what is that? Is that a planet? Oh no, it's the sun. Okay, so as I said, you can turn anything into a magical creature in your story, even the sun. Yeah. So are they laid back and relaxed or maybe they're fierce and angry or they're scared and timid? So think about what you want your magical being in the story to be like. Um, and sometimes it's very good if you put two things together that don't necessarily match. Um, for instance, if you have a, a huge, big creature, a strong creature, that's actually very timid and scared. That might be a funny thing in your story. So the next question is, where do they live? Are they somewhere in the forest, deep in the forest? Or are they high up living on a mountain somewhere? Or are they in the city? Wherever you decide to let your magical creature live, it's important that it somehow reflects in their behavior. So if they live in the forest, maybe they're very good at hiding in the forest. Or if they live in the city, how do they adapt to having so many people around them? Maybe they eat the food um, out of bins that has been thrown away. Or if they're up on the mountain, can they climb really well? Can they fly? How do they deal with um, the fact that the air up there is very thin? So these are all things to consider when you decide where to let your magical creature live. Now comes number four. So the fourth advice I can give you when you create a magical creature is to go big. That doesn't mean you need to have a big creature like my giant. What you need is to make it as to, to go as wild as possible with it. So you have a magical creature. You make it super magical. You have a big creature, you make it huge. You have a small creature, you make it tiny. You have a scary creature, make it super scary. Make it super creepy. Just go a little bit more with it because these are magical creatures. You cannot exaggerate enough when you do magical creatures and magical powers. So I hope you enjoyed this and good luck with the writing.
and I'm looking forward to hearing from your magical creatures and the creatures you created and the stories you wrote.